Welcome to my messy studio. I wanted to give you a little bit of a different view and it's nighttime too. So, you know, the hair is not looking the best, uh, you know, whatever, it's okay. So the question I get asked the most is, Christy, can I do watercolor and not know how to draw or sketch? And people have this huge fear factor block when it comes to sketching and I get it because it's a whole other level of stress. So friends, I'm here today because I'm going to teach you how to cheat. Yeah, you heard me right. I've got a little sketching hack for you and it's so good and so fun. And uh, we just need to get right into it. All right, do you wanna paint with me? No sketching. Do you want to paint with me? Well, come on, let's go. All right, friends, I know you're going to think I'm crazy with this one, but I want you to go to Google, go to Instagram, wherever you find inspiration. I want you to find a few incredible images that really inspire you. So for me, it's, of course, flowers. And if you're following along, then just channel your flower loving spirit, okay? So I'm not kidding. Print out a couple full page size flower composition. So maybe it's a single bloom, maybe it's a page of multiple blooms on one page. Print them out and wait till you see what we're going to do with them. I personally love to follow floral designers. It's like my jam. Tulipina is one of my favorites. Yes, it's the word tulip with the I-N-A on the end. She's incredible. And then I just found some random Google images and you can kind of see the scale that I printed these out as. Um, Super straightforward. Today, friends, for materials, I'm using Academy watercolor paper, the rough version. It's new for me. I just got it in and I'm really enjoying it. Super fun. I'm also using um, a set of handmade watercolors that I recently expanded. Check out the info below about what I'm using exactly. But please remember, friends, you know how I roll. Use what you have. Use what you love. I'm going for a fall vibe today. So I chose one of my handmade watercolor sets that is definitely more earthy, all right? You do you, boo. <laughs> that I need to get on a t-shirt, I think. Okay, so I've got my Fiskars. They're not the prettiest scissors, but they do the trick. I am cutting out these flowers, okay? Remember, I don't want you worrying about sketching, but I want you to be able to play around with the fun of having pencil lines in your painting because it's super fun. It's a look and it's beautiful. So I am cutting out these flowers. My little trick for easy breezy cutting is to move the paper, move your hand that's holding the paper, not your scissors as much. And as you go, remove the excess, remove all those big pieces of paper that otherwise will get in your way as you're trimming. Now, don't be precious about this cutting. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want the general shape of the flower. Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't you love how I like to assume that I can read your mind? But Okay, I have a feeling I know what you're thinking. Christy, what in the world? Is this a craft project? Stick with me. We are going to be painting so soon. So basically, we're going to be cutting these out and then we're going to trace them onto the watercolor paper and then get right to painting. Okay, friends, I have a ton of options here and notice I didn't get super detailed with the cutting and I really recommend that you don't either. You just wanna have some options. I think I have about 15 different flowers, leaves, berries here. And now I'm gonna build out a loose composition. And the thing is, I'm not gonna to plan too much from the beginning. I'm just gonna start somewhere and build out from there. So don't get stuck here, okay? Promise me you're not gonna get stuck here. Friends, are you having a good time already? Because I'm already having a good time. So give this video a boop. That's a like. And let's keep going. So I mentioned, I'm just going to start with this one sweet little flower. I don't know. It almost looks like a little begonia. And that's going to be my starting point. I've sketched the outline of the flower very simply. Not a lot of pressure on my pencil. You could also use a pen. You could use a marker. You could use a Sharpie. You do you. And just the freedom and the excitement of getting that one first flower down, that first trace is so fun. And then move on to the next. I love this cluster of leaves and I'm gonna get it right in there. I'm not, I promise you, I'm not thinking a lot. I'm not planning a ton. Now, you can trace in a little and then you could go freeform. 
It's up to you. But this video is for those of you who get really nervous when it comes to sketching, but you like the look. So if you don't want to freeform it, don't, but just know that you can, it can kind of be a hybrid. All right, friends, are you still with me? Have you, have you, are you convinced that I've completely lost my mind? Stick with me. This is so fun. Now, as you go, you could certainly start to plan. The great thing about having these cutouts is that you can play around and you can decide where you want to trace your flower shape. So you can set some out, move them, rearrange, think about your composition. Just don't spend too much time in the planning because my guess is you don't have hours and hours and hours for painting today. So I want you to use your time wisely and use your time in a way that's just full of joy and full of freedom. Now think about details that you want to add as you go. You can just trace the outline of your flower and leave it at that and we'll watercolor later and you could fill in some fun wet on wet details that way. Or like I'm doing, I am adding some detail with my pencil, little squiggles, little round shapes in the middle to define the center, little scratchy marks, but I'm keeping it easy, breezy, loose, and beautiful. That kind of sounded like, like a cover girl commercial. What was it? Easy, breezy, beautiful. It works, works for watercolor. Now you can think about your flowers also overlapping each other. Maybe some of the flowers are kind of tucked behind another. And that is certainly something that you can think about. Here with the sunflower, I'm definitely kind of tucking some of the parts of the flower behind the other tracings that I have already, but it doesn't, again, need to be perfect and I don't want you to overthink it. I've got some lines here that probably should be erased. Uh, I'm probably not gonna erase them. I'm probably gonna paint right over them and not worry about it. And trust me, you're probably thinking, well, wait, isn't that gonna look weird? How's this gonna work out? It's all good. It's so gonna work out. Because the thing is when you, and this is probably a question I get asked more than anything when it comes to sketching then painting in watercolor is how do you get rid of the lines afterwards? For me, and this is a personal decision, I don't wanna necessarily get rid of all the lines. So I don't do a lot of erasing, if any, on most of my finished paintings. Sometimes, depending on the level of detail I've done in watercolor, the pencil lines completely disappear without erasing. And then there are times when I want them to stay. I want them to be front and center. And this, my friends, is one of those times. All right, now I'm going into some kind of berry-like filler flower type of shapes. You can take a lot of liberties here. These are just little like strange, lazy circles. You don't have to trace these from a cutout. I'm not. But if you want to stick to your cutouts, stick to your cutouts. But just know you can go freehand and you can see what happens. Something to keep in mind is the size of your paper. This paper is, I believe it's a 10 by 10 inch. And if that feels overwhelming to you, don't go so big. I know a lot of watercolor pads that you have at home are like 9 by 12, 8 by 10. If if you're overwhelmed by the idea of having to complete a painting in one setting, just go smaller, friends. Five by seven is a great size. And then up from there, eight by 10. But if you often feel that intimidation factor of, I've got to finish this, stay small. All right, this is really coming together. Let's see what happens next. All right, here we go. Here is the quote unquote finished sketch. Notice I didn't go all the way out to the edges. I can add more later if I want to, but this is where I landed for today. It feels good and it feels balanced. Take a moment, take a breath. If you feel like things are kind of off center and you don't like that vibe, add a little berry, add a little extra leaf, and let's get right on to painting. Now, don't throw away those cutouts because they're gonna be your reference. You don't have to copy the colors that you see in your cutouts, but if you want to, hold on to them so you can look and see how yellow fades into brown or where there's little specks of orange. You can have fun with it. Or you could just turn that yellow flower that you traced into a purple one. It's all good. 
I am starting with the Art for Joy Sake brush. It's a quarter inch dagger from the Art for Joy Sake brush collection. And I'm going in with a teal and a purple right in the center of this first flower. And I'm going wet on dry, which means my brush is wet, full of pigment, but my paper is dry. Now, very quickly, anything I put on top of this area that I'm painting becomes wet on wet. So keep that in mind, wet page is an opportunity. And to that end, I'm adding a little bit of this pretty like corally red color, super pretty. Now I'm grabbing my yellow and I've rinsed my brush in between because yellow is the easiest color to get dirty. So always wanna rinse before you're about to dive into yellow, in most cases, if you wanna clean yellow. And I'm using still the quarter inch dagger and look how I'm holding this dagger brush, friends. Different angles, different pressure, kind of scrubbing in the color. And I, did you see that? Did you see how I changed up the yellow? I went to a from a faded yellow to a brighter yellow to almost like a, an ochre or a brown. And I'm letting them just mingle as I go. Now, if you're wondering like, how do I stay inside the lines? You don't have to stay inside the lines. I'm definitely tending here to try to stay inside the lines a little bit more because I know that's the vibe that I want. But to do that, to get more control using this brush, even if you're using a round brush and you're not using my brush set, use more of the tip of the brush and less of the side of the brush. Now remember, everything is wet now. So I'm going from the center outwards, radiating around with a little bit of purple and a rust color on my brush. Look at that, gorgeous. Now, the yellow isn't soaking wet. It's not like puddled on the page. It's damp, so I'm not getting like those explosions, but I'm, I'm here for it, I love it. So this is where thinking about how much water is on your page really helps you. So you know when your page is just damp, that you're still gonna get those nice blends. Things are gonna diffuse one color into the next, but you're not gonna get those kind of out of control explosions. All right, just like a fine wine. I mean, I don't drink fine wine. I don't drink wine, but you have to let it rest, right? So we're gonna let that first flower just hang out and see what happens, see how the color changes. We can always come back to it. Or I gotta be honest, it looks pretty freaking cool as it is right now. So something to keep in mind as we're continuing on. I want you to understand where my headspace is with this painting. I'm basically just coloring in my outlines. I'm not gonna get too crazy detailed today. Easy, breezy, beautiful, cover girl. No, I'm kidding, oh my gosh. They're gonna like come at me with a cease and desist. Anyway, I can't help it. So I'm moving on to this, I think it was a peony. It definitely looks like a peony or maybe a garden rose that I traced. Uh, and I'm adding purples. I'm adding kind of these raspberry tones. I definitely have more color on my brush this time around and a little bit more moisture too. There's more water on this flower because I want things to kind of rock and roll. Now, I got some splashes on here. You can sop those up with some paper towel or let them go. Let them be. Isn't that pretty? Just simple, simple, simple. Started light, pretty good amount of water and color on the brush. And, and then I just went right in with some heavy, darker, kind of alizarin crimson colors, and now with this beautiful purple. Gorgeous. I'm not gonna spend too much time here though. I'm gonna move on. All right, it's time to fall in love with this beautiful sunflower, and I'm switching up my brush I'm using the Forget Rules brush, which is also known as the Half Inch Dagger. So Half Inch Dagger is great when you wanna cover more area in less time. I'm picking up a little bit of an ochre, so like a dark yellow. If you don't have an ochre per se, just mix a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown with a lot of yellow. And I'm immediately bringing in that lighter yellow and then that brighter yellow. I love getting a lot of different shades of the same color on the page quickly, quickly. And now right away going to like a rusty orange and radiating around those first brush strokes that I put down. I've got a different, more intense orange, rusty orange radiating around. And I'm definitely, I'm not copying my cutout. I'm not. Now I'm adding some bright yellow on the outer edge here. I did not rinse my brush. Notice that. I knew I didn't have a lot of that rusty orange on my brush. So I just said, the heck with it. I'm not gonna rinse this brush. Now notice I've got the curved edge facing the paper and that's giving me a nice amount of control to kind of notch into those points of the sunflower. 
See that? Changing the angle of my brush, of my hand, and just bouncing around the center of the flower. Now, I am not loving kind of that rusty center that is in my cutout, so I'm making it green. I'm adding some green because I feel like it. I put some bold green down here and immediately felt like it was too much, so I rinsed my brush really quickly off screen and I scooped up some of that green. That's called lifting. Friends, if you want to know more about the basics of watercolors, because I'm talking a lot about some basic techniques here, and if you're feeling a little overwhelmed and you're like, wait, what's wet on wet? What's wet on dry? What's lifting? I want you to head to this video because I really think this one is going to help explain some of these basics. All right, let's get back to it. Notice I added a uh, pretty intense version of that rusty orange. If you don't have a pre-mixed like rusty orange, grab a red, a yellow, and a brown and mix it up. You could even add a little purple to that mixture and you're gonna get a nice version of that. I have switched to the cat's tongue, friends. The cat's tongue brush is definitely the brush in my collection that people have the most question about, but they're also the most surprised and delighted by this brush. It's definitely a stiffer brush. It gives you great control because of its stiffness. Um, it's not gonna give you those super like loose and graceful lines. I mean, it will, but it'll feel like more of a struggle. And I'm just going in here into my berries. I started with yellow using kind of the edge of the brush, not so much the tip or the point of the brush. Now I immediately went into this one berry that was super dark. I went in with a dark brown, a little bit of blue, some rusty orange, all within like 30 seconds. I got all those colors on the page instinctively, boom, 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 and let them mingle while they were wet. And look at what's happening, it's gorgeous. Now I rinse my brush, let's go back to the yellow. And see, I went outside the lines a little bit, but I'm okay with it, and you can be too. This, this style of painting is all about impression and immediacy, and it's stylized. It's not meant to be realistic, friends. All right, friends, all right, how are we feeling? We feeling good? If you're having a good time, will you give this video a boop? Because you know what that means. When you like my videos, it lets YouTube know you're having a good time and it lets other people in on the party. So thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. I upload twice a week and we have such a blast. I reply to all of your comments and I don't just say, oh, thank you. Like if you ask me a question, friends, I'm giving you a lengthy answer. So I'm so glad you're here. All right, friends, I am going to my three quarter inch flat wash brush. This brush can do so much and I'm gonna do this little cluster of leaves and your mind is gonna be blown. Look at what you can do. It takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of finesse, how to hold the brush. I'm almost holding it perpendicular to the page. Look at that, I went right in. I am breaking a rule here, friends. I went right in with intense, heavy color. The rules of watercolor say you should start light and build up. I break that rule more often than I think I brush my teeth. Uh, well, that was kind of gross, but I think you know what I mean, right? Like that's a rule that I cannot resist breaking. So there are just moments where I wanna go right in with the bold color. I wanna get right to the boldness. And this brush helps me do that. Look at that. Just with a little twist of my wrist, I can get into the tiniest of corners. I'm adding a little bit of like a buff. Did you see that color I picked up? It's like an ivory. Do yourself a favor. If you don't have some type of ivory on your palette, uh, Daniel Smith does a gorgeous buff titanium. Get it. Get it. Split the tube with four people. You only have to pay a couple bucks. Just have a half pan of buff titanium in your life. You won't regret it. All right, now I'm going to the number two round brush. This is a classic brush. It's a great way to add detail, but it also is, you can use a round brush to create dimension and shape. Just takes a little bit longer with a round brush to create the same leaf that you might be able to do in one or two strokes with a dagger. But I still love me a round brush. See what I did there with that leaf? While that leaf was still wet, I went in with even more intense, rusty, wine-colored watercolor and added some gorgeous detail so simply and easily. 
Friends, just a reminder, I on purpose do not call out specific brands on the regular of watercolor, and I also don't call out specific colors on the regular. I will always tell you I'm using kind of a rusty orange, and if you don't have one that's pre-mixed, you can make it this way. But just know this, I do that by design so you don't get hung up on worrying about having the same exact colors as me. I don't want you to worry about that. Now, if you want to know what I'm using specifically, hit me up in comments. I will always reply. It might take me a little while to figure out and remember what I was using, but I will always get back to you. All right, friends, zooming in here and I'm going back to the half inch dagger. And I am still using this particular cutout that I worked with. I love, I love all the colors going on in that leaf. So I definitely want to try to recreate that as close as I can with this washi style, which is why I pulled the cutout nearer to me. All right, going right in with some green. Now you'll notice when I was putting down the water first, some of that rusty orange just kind of exploded and I'm okay with that. It works. Now see how I'm using the tip of this dagger? It's a big brush, but look how much control and definition I can get with the tip of that brush. Love it. Now if you're wondering, wait, 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 wait a minute, Christy, rewind. You painted that leaf outline with water first, with clean water. You bet your butt I did. I do this a lot. So think about painting in the shape with clean-ish water and then dropping in your pigment to see what happens. It's a great way to get blends without being too precious about it. It's a great way to start wet on wet, the wow technique. And it's a great way to really push that explosive nature of watercolor. Give it a try. I'm going in here with kind of a wine color and I'm just kind of seeing how things mingle on their own. I, I felt like they needed a little help, so I added some water to my brush and I dabbed that water between the green and the wine colors and let it kind of mingle even more. So that being said, if you feel like you're not getting that smooth mingling, blending of two colors next to one another, rinse your brush and add a couple drops of clean water in between the two colors that you want to blend a little bit better and watch what happens. It's amazing. All right, just keeping on here. Friends, just wanna remind you, would love to have you subscribe to this channel. We don't want you to miss a thing. I upload twice a week and oh my goodness, we have an amazing community here. We're always chatting and it's such a good time, so don't miss out. Now, at the beginning of this painting, friends, I definitely thought that I wasn't going to get terribly detailed. And now that I'm into it, I really am solidified in that belief. I love what's happening here. I love the freshness of these watercolor washes on top of the pencil lines. And I don't want to overdo it. I want to keep that, that kind of fresh, immediate vibe. So now, you might decide otherwise. You might decide that you want to lay down these first washy colors and then let them dry and then go over top and build on top. And that is totally cool. You can totally do that. That is called glazing. Now, if you want to know more about that technique and how you can layer and layer and layer, layer and dry, layer and dry, layer and dry, I think you should watch this video. I definitely think if that's kind of where your instinct is pulling you, this video is going to help you in that journey. Oh, friends, I love this leaf. I love her so much. I've got some purple going on, some of that dark green. Gorgeous. Now, I am adding an unexpected color here. This is one of my signatures. You don't have to do this. I often, almost in every painting that I work on, I add a very unexpected color. It's usually either somewhere in the middle or towards the end when I'm feeling like I'm ready to wrap things up. And that's what that teal turquoise was all about. Love it. All right, let's zoom out. I want you to see where we're at. I want you to get a feel for where we're at at this point. I love it. I love it so much. How are you feeling? Maybe you need a breath. Do you need to just like take a moment, a few deep breaths? I hope you're not panicking. This is, this is fun. This is good stuff. Isn't that funny how we have to remind ourselves sometimes that we're having fun? And I think it's important to bring that up when it comes to painting and watercolor, especially. 
you have to remember that this is supposed to be fun. You have to remember that you're not chasing the finished product. You are chasing the joy that you feel as the process goes on. That's why I'm always encouraging you not to get too hung up on how does it look right now? How is it going to look in five minutes? And when I'm quote done, am I going to be happy with it? Try to tunnel vision this one, friends. Stay in the moment, stay focused. That's where your joy lives. All right, now I am going in, a lot of this is dry, and I'm going in with a, a few brush strokes of a more intense color in areas, just to add a touch more definition. You'll notice I'm doing that right now in the peony, and I'm using the Art for Joy's Sake quarter inch dagger and the curved edge pointing down, and I'm going between the curved edge and the tip of this brush with a little bit of blue mixed with purple, and look, I'm even getting sketchy. Look at that, look at that. Isn't that fun? I'm just bouncing along this flower. If you don't like this heavy-handed detail, you don't need to do it. You can stop with all of these gorgeous soft washes and call it a day. Now, of course, I could not resist. I'm bringing in the liner brush. I grabbed one of my rust colors, and do you see? I just went right into the blue half pan, and I've got this gorgeous dark color now. Don't panic. I know I just totally dirtied up my palette. And I gotta tell you, friends, I do this all the time. And if you wanna know more about how I mix color, you gotta watch this video. You've gotta watch it because I tell you all about how to not stress out over making your palette a little dirty. And it creates such a dynamic look on your page. So go check it out. All right, I am working through adding a touch of detail with this liner brush. I just love the graceful quality that this brush offers, so I just can't resist a few moments of it. And I think these thin, graceful lines of watercolor complement all of that pencil that's popping through really nicely. Going back to that very first flower with my cat's tongue, I wanna to define the center a little bit. I'm using kind of a purple, a little bit of blue on my brush from not rinsing, even a little bit of green to really darken that up and just bounce around the center. I'm still sticking with the cat's tongue, grabbing a little bit of my creamy yellow. If you don't have a premix creamy yellow, just mix a little bit of yellow with white. And here comes that turquoise again, friends. Here comes that like random color I talked about earlier. And I'm using the tip of the cat's tongue to define the center of that sunflower a little bit further. And I got to get a little bit more of that turquoise in somewhere. The thing about composition, it's all about odd numbers. So threes, five, seven. So you want to have an odd number of points where you apply a detail. So that turquoise right now is appearing in three places and it's really working, I think. What do you think? Wrapping up this focal point sunflower, she kind of became the focal point. I wasn't sure if the sunflower would be the focal point or the flower to the upper left of her, but it's definitely working out to be the sunflower. So I'm pushing some of the detail that's kind of radiating out from the center with my Remember Joy liner brush. Friends, if you are curious about my brushes, these are all I use. I design these brushes, so I am definitely biased and I'm not shy about it. I am passionate about these brushes. If you wanna learn more about them, check out the information section. It's all there. All right, I'm calling this one done. I'm calling her done and I am in love. And I think this technique is something you should give yourself the time and the space to try. All right, all right, if this is your jam, I really want you to watch this video next because I think you're on the path to something incredible. And this video is the perfect next step. All right, friends, happy painting. Until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.